speaking in the museum. So another example of distilling things down to their bare essence and kind of re-exploring re them is this little nook here. It's, a, uh, it's an African shrine painting from West Africa. And one of the things that ends up being interesting as we start talking to more with the education staff and the curatorial staff about this particular piece, originally it was going to be, you know, uh, we wanted to give a sense of being there. And there was going to be a large video projection that kind of pulled down onto the floor and it was projected from behind and, and gave this idea of being in the environment. And talking more to the staff, we realized that, that unlike Western art, that a lot of this African art has a very nonlinear experience. It's not a case of where an artwork is kind of, you don't go through the process of having an idea, mixing pigments, getting materials ready, actually painting the work, and then you're done. But rather, as part of this experience, the painting is almost a byproduct, that you have different categories like preparing pigments, uh, praying, dancing, singing, ritual sacrifice, and then the actual painting itself that are all equally important. And so. That in conjunction with the realization that the original footage that was captured was on handheld VHS that was kind of shaky, made us realize that that big experience was gonna be lousy for the space. It would be very, a very large scale jittery and shaky and would feel pretty awkward. And so we recognized that each of these different stories kind of had equal prevalence. Now, it's not, not, as, uh, not as chaotic as we would have kind of liked the layout to be because of the inside structure of this case, but it gives some sense that there's not a particular hierarchy between these different elements. And so they all play at the same time, all with equal weight. Um, and again, here is a case of where we made a custom QuickTime quick time controller or wrapped some software around QuickTime to kind of do this individual playback and control that. One of the other things that's interesting is that with all of these different systems is we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to be really lazy fundamentally, that everything you see here we can control remotely, we can turn individual screens and projectors on and off remotely, we can turn computers on and off remotely, do updates and that sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, and it was interesting because some of that stuff just didn't exist. Like for example, the projector controllers that we did we ended up hacking an RS, RS-232 interface and uh, figuring out how to make that work over TCP IP, done something that wasn't even documented by the company of how to interact with their projectors, and, and it became something that worked. So, you know, fundamentally,